Hello everybody and welcome to this BK Academy tutorial which forms the second video looking at incorporating slider into our adjustments. So we're calling this one dialing in. In part one we looked at the basics of the slider and how to start using it in general tour play as well as in tournaments looking at also the minimum, medium and maximum distance of our clubs. If you haven't yet seen part one the link is in the video description down below. In this part we're going to examine the slider in more detail and how we use it to dial in shots, especially useful during tournaments. Before we get started don't forget to hit thumbs up on the video please and if you're new here very warm welcome. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and the bell button so you get notified when we go live or upload new content. In this video we've got two examples to look at and it's both from the Jamil Dunes course. We're going to look at two par fours. Here are the overviews of these holes. As you will notice, these are what we call linear holes. There's no real dog legs to the left or the right. The line of play from the tee to the green is pretty much a straight line. And linear holes like this offer the best opportunity to maximize the benefits provided by the slider. This is because we can use yardage notes from our drives and have a really good reference point of distance remaining to the pin. Whilst the game doesn't actually provide us with the information of how far away we are from the pin on our second shots, we use the yardage notes instead to adapt our adjustments, which will take into account drives that are, for instance, slightly longer or shorter, as it's not possible to guarantee to hit the exact same yardage every time. So here we're going to look at example number one, and we're going to start with the drive. So I'm going to talk you through uh, this one. With the drives on all of these uh, holes and in tournament play in general it's best to be as consistent as possible with your setup and your spins. So here take note of the top spin I'm using and my start point. Before I make my adjustment I'm looking at the top of the clear ring touching the top of the fairway then ball guide down the middle. I'm adjusting my rings and I'm taking my shot. So every time I play this drive, assuming this goes well, that's the setup that I'm going to use. We do hit perfect, which is always beneficial when you're looking to dial in. So we're playing our shot. I've got my pencil and paper at the ready. We're near to the right hand rough, but we're OK. We could tweak it if need be, but we're driving here for 375 yards. Here I'm playing by feel and as this is uh, an opening round I've already got some yardages that were used in similar wind directions but not exactly the same in the qualifying round. But the setup I'm using in the qualifying was a no spin so I'm going to go for the same thing here. I'm setting up with my target no spin ball guide to hole. Now here I'm just having a go really playing by feel. I know I'm in between min and mid distance. And based on my qualifying round shots, I play this one 30% slider, 10% elevation. I've no idea if this is right, but I'm setting up the way I did in qualifying round. As it happens, we drop it and we are just at pin. Maybe a fraction to the left, but nothing to worry about. So from here, I start to create my yardage notes. So I have a table here in Excel. You can use, obviously... Um, pencil, paper, whatever. So what I do, the middle of the yardage table, I'm putting in my drive distance, 375. And in the column next to it, we know that we got a drop playing 30% on the slider, plus 10% elevation. So I'm going to make note of that as well. So now we need to also vary this depending on our distance of our drive. So for instance, if I hit a slightly shorter drive or a longer drive, now the Thorn, uh, short irons and long irons in general, they play 2% slider for every yard. So the next thing I do is I fill in the rest of the distances here. So I put my drive in the middle, then I'm putting in other drive yardages here because sometimes we might get a bounce that gives us a slightly longer or shorter drive. In the middle here we've got a drop that works. So if we're driving a shorter distance we're going to be further away from the green and the flag so we need more adjustment on our club for the second shot. 
So we add 2% for every yard. Okay, so if we have a shorter drive, need to adjust our second shot more because we're further away. And the same if we have a longer drive, we're going to be nearer to minimum distance of our club with the short iron. So once again, I then subtract two. So there I've got my yardage tables and assuming that I'm setting up in the same way, no spin, ball guide to hole, I can then reference these values the next time I'm playing this hole in that particular wind direction. Now sometimes of course we do have different wind directions to deal with and sometimes depending on the hole and the situation you will need to adapt your slider percentages. Here's another example. It's the same hole but look we do have uh, a predominantly more headwind but I'm going the same thing the same setup no spin I've done my drive I know that my drive was 366 yards so again I'm doing the same setup as before no spin this is a trial and error shot however I did actually get a very good estimation here I'm over adjusting this one so I'm going with even though we do have a shorter drive still a little bit more slider than we would have done with the other wind direction as it happens, I'm still playing with plus 10 elevation, but the slider I'm using here is 56%. So once again, we've got a drop in here. It is slightly to the left, but it still goes in. So then we go back to our slider table. This is the slider table from the first example. But what I'm going to do, I've programmed my spreadsheet here, but again, you can do this with pencil and paper. Putting in my drive distance, confirm drop, it was 366 yards and I played 56% slider. So again, we now have a slider percentage for that wind direction as well. And that's something you will build up as your tournament weeks go on. So once again, with the thorn, it's 2% for every yard. Same with the long iron. If, for instance, you're playing with sniper, that plays at 2.5% per yard. So instead of going up in twos, I would go two, and then three, then two, and then three. And the same going down as well. We've done two there, 56. From 58 is two, then we go three, then two, then three, then two, and then three. So it's slightly different with the wood club, but the idea is still the same. Now it's all very well if you get them in the hole with your initial setup, you've got your slider percentages there, but what happens if we actually miss slightly on our first go? Let's have a look at what we need to do. We're on the different hole here, this is the other par four, but I'm going with the same setup, one bar of right spin, which is what I've been using to drop this. My slider adjustment here, I go with 75% slider plus 20% elevation. I'm adjusting my rings, in which case this is 4.6 rings, according to the numbers I'm getting from Clash Caddy. Wind is blowing right to left. We hit perfect, however, this ball will miss on the left hand side. So that means it's under adjusted because the wind has pushed it too far. So we need to adjust more. What do I do? So I go to the Clash Caddy. I've got here 75 slider, 20 elevation. And there was my ring adjustment in the blue box, 4.6. I think I needed at least one more decimal, 0.1. So here I just move the slider and I see that number tick over to 4.7. So I look at the slider there, 80, 81% slider. I think that would have been in there. That's 0 0.1, maybe 0 0.2, in which case that would be 83, 84% slider. It's all about judging what you think is best according to how much you missed by. But then I would adapt my slider percentages from there. So hopefully we've corrected the under adjustment and we can drop it next time we play that hole. One thing that is worth noting here is that sometimes your slider value won't actually equal the exact distance of your club. This all depends on your initial setup of the shot and what elevation you're using. Because I could get the same slider numbers, uh, same ring numbers, adjusting with maybe 0 elevation or 20 elevation or 10. It would just equal a different percentage. So it all depends what your initial reference point is. What is important is that you reference your drive distance and your setups as these will give you the accurate adjustments in order to get more drops. So ensure that you're setting up the same way every time. It's no good playing a no spin shot on your thorn and then the next time you play the hole you go for 
four bars of backspin setting up much further away from your start point. You know, you need to be consistent when you're trying to dial in using the slider. Finally, of course, we all try and hit perfect every shot. However, if you hit a minor great left or great right, you can also factor these details in to your slide adjustments for the second shot. There isn't a hard and fast rule that will work every time. This is all about judging for yourself. If you know that a great left drive is going to put you further away from the green, then you obviously want to add a little bit to your slider. On the other hand, if you've hit great right and that takes you a little bit closer to the green, then you need to subtract 2 or 4% depending on the accuracy of the driver that you are using. Thank you for watching. I do hope it's been enjoyable and please check out the rest of the Academy tutorial playlists for more ideas and tips on how to improve your gameplay. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.